Hi, welcome to my tutorial on how to do some kind of real quick and dirty biomechanic artwork. I'll just be kind of briefly narrating what I'm doing. Let's see, right now, here under the title, all I'm doing is establishing just a couple of different flows. I find that when you do this, um, nine times out of ten, you get an overall, just, just a better, more simple uh, piece of artwork that you know one that flows one that you don't have to uh, you know get your eyes dirty with this this uh, curve device I'm using right here just kinda kinda gives it a oh I don't know just a just a twisted uh, dimensionality that you can't get by just laying pipes you know uh, these these I just call I kinda call them quagmire <laughs> for lack of a better word You'll also notice um, that all the quagmire in the back, what that does is it sets up the background. What we're going to be doing after we kind of cartoonly um, just kind of scry in all this stuff, what, what we're going to be doing is uh, just setting up a background and a foreground, which is, of course, what you do in anything that you design artistically. You, you, you set up the, the, the foreground elements that you want. You set up your flows, and then, of course, everything else needs to be a little bit more fuzzy and off in the background. Um, now, in this particular piece, I'm not going to be using a whole lot of color. This is pr primarily just a black and gray, and um, I think that you know by by the end of it, you'll kind of see why it's kind of a it's kind of a very dark piece anyway. Here's an observation for you. Um, you'll notice that there are no straight lines in this. I did this completely intentionally and partially because of my background in art. Um, there, like I said, there, there's there's no straight lines in nature. My hands are fairly organic, and I think it's very natural for for this type of stuff to be very organic in nature. So uh, when when you're when you're trying this out, try to avoid straight lines. They're only going to mess you up. Uh, they'll look awkward. Um, at least for this type of application, I'm sure that you know if you, if you found a a way to use straight lines in your artwork, fantastic. I hope it works. Um, I just could never <laughs> could never seem to get into it. Again, still setting up some of the background, establishing some some backdrop flows. You guys that have been in art a while can kind of see where I'm going with this. Now it, it looks to me here like what we're do, we're going to do is uh, just establish some darkness. We're just sketching it in. You can see how how big the brush is. Um, I'm using an application called Adobe uh, Photoshop, um, all with just different size brushes. Most of the time, I use a using kind of an oversized brush and just just. I'm real cautious about uh, what kind of pressure I'm putting on the stylus. I know some of you guys have mice. I really don't know what to tell you. I use a pressure sensitive stylus and it seems to work really well. Yeah, you'll notice I'm not necessarily coming out to all the all the little suggested hints and lines that we've got going here. Um, I'm just trying to to get my eyes shifted into uh, you know, uh, mid tones and, and dark tones and, and highlights. Trying to get my brain to kind of see differently now. I find as as we add to a piece of art, it, it, it darn near creates itself. I'm sure that all you guys have had had experience with uh, you know doing something kind of extemporaneous like this. And if not, fantastic. I'm glad glad we could help you today. I'm by no means the, the most visionary artist, but uh, I see what I see, and uh, fortunately, um, we've been we've been given the tools, you know, all this digital technology and and whatnot. We could save save a little little bit of paper and just kind of you know bits bits and electrons are <laughs> seem to be pretty recyclable, so. I really enjoy using a using a uh, computer to design most of my work. It's a lot of fun. 
now it looks like we're getting away from the cartoony appeal and getting into a little bit more of a more of a realism effect Also, the, the software, I'll just make a real quick note of it so I don't have to do it later. The software I'm using, um, again, is Adobe Photoshop and Camtasia Studio. And for some reason, um, I, I'm not very good at, at the audio portion of this thing. Or I just used a uh, program called Audacity. Notice you can still see some of the lines and and whatnot. Um, again, I didn't erase any of these because you know there's something organic about biomechanic work, especially the way you know influences such as H.R. Geiger and and, and uh, the like. The way they do it, they just you know it's it's also touch and go. They just get in and get out, and if if you know. I had an art teacher one time that told me, hey, l listen, if a, if a painting or a drawing looks good to you, then it's done. Quit messing with it. You're just going to mess it up. So you're going to find that that uh, I don't really overwork this thing. I just just get in and get out and, and kind of build it as I need to. If I see something that needs to be remedied or repaired, I do it. Uh, what I just did there was just just uh, add texture, kind of a Geiger-esque feel. If you're not familiar with with H.R. Geiger, uh, you artists probably will be. But if, if if you're just watching this for the first time and haven't heard of H.R. Geiger, check his website out. Um, I don't know what it is right offhand. I imagine you just go to Go to your search engine and type Geiger, G-I-G-E-R, and look at some of his his stuff. It's absolutely phenomenal. He just he just pours his mind onto his canvas. It's it's wonderful stuff. Um, there's some uh, just an incredible black and gray stuff that he does. There's there's a colored version. You you can see a lot of repetition. Um, a lot of things get getting you know, bigger and smaller. Um, and that's a really, really great device for the eye. The, the eyes just eat that stuff up. And I mean, already this thing is starting to take shape. And uh, I haven't, uh, I haven't addressed uh, the contrast with the background or adding any highlights yet. So sit tight. We're still, we're still rocking here. Little little trick I found while doing this stuff is, um, not, you know, don't be afraid to use use black. There's a lot of there's a lot of black in shadow, and uh, you know where the where the light doesn't doesn't shine so to speak. <laughs> and uh, you know if you'll if you'll go into these these little places and just add black, um, your highlights start to appear by default. So it's 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 really kind of cool. Just don't be scared to to throw a lot of black in there. See now I'm just putting little splotches of black in there and by what what ends up happening it looks like there's a texture back there. And I think that, you know, as opposed to the the foreground which appears to be much more smooth um all these little textures in the back give it give it kind of a unique contrast.
Now what I'm doing here is just putting some some shadows on this this top uh, pipe or tube, whatever you want to call it, intestine, what <laughs> if you will, um, that just gives it a a little bit more texture. You know, I didn't want to make it just you know real. Uh, Oh, I don't know. Smooth surfaced. I, I wanted it to kind of give give just a little bit more of a textured appeal, a little bit more organic. Yeah, just kind of re doing a little repetition back there. Make all the background kind of relate. Make sure it's a little fuzzy. Because see, as a as a device of contrast, um, things in the foreground should be a little bit less fuzzy, a little bit more sharp in detail. I'm just looking around and seeing you know where I didn't come quite to the the original sketch line kind of blend that together I'll be shifting gears here and um, you know using a blur tool and a smudge tool the things you know there's some really nice tools in in um, Photoshop now see what I'm doing here is I'm just taking just random little lines and just adding it because it, it makes it makes things look a little bit more Oh, organic again more much I don't know if you can you can tell or if you've noticed but it looks a little bit more follicle again using something from nature the hair follicle has beautiful patterns and shapes I'll smudge these lines out a little bit I'll be coming back over them in just a second Yeah, just using the smudge tool, you know, grabbing a little little bit of dark, and coming across those those lighter parts to give it kind of a just a follicle texture. Some of the stuff in the background, when I get it all all blurred again, you probably won't see it as well as you're seeing it now. We don't want that background to be too um, competitive with our foreground. Because it's really the foreground elements that, that the eye sees anyway, and so if we make it um, if we make it compete, obviously it's going to be not too great eye candy. Now what we're doing right here is I'm just darkening up these little these little divots that I added because I want just a, a little a little bit of sharper texture up front to catch the eye. Make the blur tool after we get that done and just kind of blur those out just a touch. It makes it look like those are those are very deep, kind of deep set little holes. Almost like two two pipes converging into one. Again we'll we'll change the blur just a little bit so we can work a little faster. I set the blur sensitivity up just a touch. And now we're going to just go quickly around in the background and kind of soften soften that stuff up. Notice I'm not not spending a whole lot of time. I'm just I'm really just kind of sketching again. Let my eye do the work for me. My my hand just kind of follows where my eye goes. Try that sometime. I think that uh you'll find that <laughs> that's really the best way to draw. It's just kind of Move around wherever you feel led. Don't get hung up on you know, perfection or straight lines, especially straight lines. Good grief.
Also, you'll notice that some of these curves and contours, um, the background kind of has kind of an anti-flow. Um, one of my all-time favorite artists uh, put out a book called Reinventing the Tattoo, uh, a fellow named Guy Atchison. Wonderful artist, and uh, he's got some really great, great artistic ideas and and um, one of one of the chapters in his book, of course, I don't want to spoil it for everybody. Go get the book. <laughs> Order it from his website, hyper, hyperspacestudios.com. Incredible. Um, he talks about flow and anti-flow. And you could see it in his work. Why why that really, you know, teases the eye so well. Um, because, <laughs> you know, if you look at the foreground versus the background in this stuff, they they don't compete at all. They help each other out. And if, if anything, they, they augment and enhance each other. And uh, that really is a great depth device. You guys can use that in your, in anything, you know, in your paintings and your tattooing, whatever it is. Now, a lot of you tattoo, tattoo artists can, you'll probably ask, well, you know, that looks really good on, on, uh, you know, digital, but you can't,